Sir, could you please state your name? David Levinson. And where do you live, sir? Um, Plato, Missouri. And, and where is that from, from, from this location? Um, it's near the military base, so it's about two and a half hours. Down by Fort Leonard Wood? Yes, sir. And, and back in June of 2018, where was it that you lived? Um, Charlotte, North Carolina. And, and in that time frame, June of 20, 2017, I'm sorry, I think it's the 2018, 2017, uh, did you know a fellow by the name of Benjamin Reddick? Yes, sir. How did you know Ben? Um, through the industry. Um, we were old friends. Um, and we, when you say industry, I, I think oh, we all know where we but if you can tell the jury what that industry is. Um, the reptile industry. Okay. And, and you both were into the snake business, if you, if I can use that term. Yes, sir. And uh, could you describe a little bit uh, of where Ben was at in terms of that snake industry? Um, very well known by a lot of people. Um, definitely one of the bigger guys in the industry. Um, always conducted himself in a very professional manner and he had a lot of good people around him. And did his snake facility, did, did he have quite a few snakes at that facility? Yeah, quite a few, probably um, north of 2,000. And uh, during that June time frame, were you aware of a business deal that Ben had with another individual to, to sell a, a portion of that snake business? Yes, sir. And how, how is it you were aware of that deal? Um, there was a time where I put them in the same place together. Um, Robin was in um, St. Louis for a game. I had just mentioned that if you wanted to see somebody who was doing everything in a very professional manner in the hobby, um, a nice guy to talk to, I told him to go visit with Ben. Um, after they initially met each other, um, they had always kept in contact and Ben presented the chance to possibly buy the business. Um, at that point, they were talking back and forth. I had helped by looking over some inventory lists and kind of just giving my two cents on both sides. And once things got a little more serious, I kind of stepped back and let them finish the deal. And, and let me, you gave us a lot of information there. Let me try to help them. Sorry. No, that's okay. You mentioned a Robin. That's Robin Leonard. Yes, sir. And, and this isn't about Robin, and I hate to drag somebody into this, but he, he's a, he plays in the NHL. Yes, sir. And, and he's a goal. Yes, sir. And when you mentioned he was in town for a game, Robin was also interested away from his hockey uh, career, interested in getting into, into this industry himself. He enjoyed the hobby, enjoyed the animals. So and, yes. you were, and so you basically said, hey, next time you're in the St. Louis area, Ben's a good guy you can, you can look to and talk to. Yes, sir. And, and you said a lot more, but eventually from their contacts together with, with you, they, they worked out a deal ultimately where Robin was going to buy a portion of Ben's business. Yes, sir. And I think you said you had some input for both of them in terms of value and things like that. Uh, just my opinion, just kind of helping out both sides wherever they needed anything. And, and ultimately, do you remember what percentage of snakes approximately Ben was selling to Robin? Um, it was based on a species. Um, it was everything when it came to ball pythons, everything else in the building when it came to a percentage. I couldn't tell you how many it was, but it was just focusing on the one species. Okay. And, and while well, you can't tell us how much of the business, there was a dollar amount on that sale, correct? Mm, yes, sir. And, and what was the dollar amount of the sale? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, when it came to the nitty gritty, now anything I might have read in a paper, I might have seen it. But when it came to the financial aspect of things, I kind of stepped to the side. It was more their thing. But the, the number you knew or, or believed it to be was 1.2 million. The number I've seen, yeah, has been 1.2. And you're aware about the time of Ben's death, some of that money sh should start getting transferred from Mr. Leonard to, to, to Ben. Yes, sir. Now, in addition to that knowledge of the business, were you a fellow that Ben had, well, let me ask you this. You became aware he was murdered in June of 2018. Yes, sir. And I said 2018 again, 2017. 2017. Uh, after his murder, were you asked to be a caretaker or, or do something with all those snakes that were out there? Um, well, essentially after his murder, the day afterwards, I spoke with Lindley. Um, she had mentioned that Ben had said if anything ever happened to him to call me, essentially. Um, I had made the decision to go up there to kind of just find out where I could help out and, you know, essentially that's where it all started. So uh, basically it appeared to you that Ben had said to Lindley, hey, if something ever happened to me, Dave's the guy that might be able to help you with this whole facility of snakes. Yes, sir. And, and you eventually went up there and dealt with the, all those snakes, correct? Um, within two or three days of um, Ben passing away, I had come out to Columbia um, and within a day or two after that, I had been to the facility for the first time and then move forward with working every day. Okay. And I want to ask you about something you found, uh, ultimately. But over the next few months,
want you began caring for the snakes, correct? Yes, sir. And at some point in time, you began moving those snakes to another location. Yes, sir. Is that the place in Plato, do I remember correctly? Yes, sir. And, and as a result of that, could you tell the jury, they've seen some photographs of all these rows of what we call Tupperware containers and mm -hmm. shelving units. Could you tell the jury what you did with each of those shelving units and containers at one point in time? Yes, sir. Um, I was removing um, one cage, one rack at a time outside to kind of give everything a good cleaning. Um, I had taken a rack system to turn it on its side on a table so I could scrub it. And when I did, a um, bullet casing had come out and fallen on the table. Um, at that point, I had been dealing with Devin, one of the investigators, and I reached out to him to let him know that I happened to notice this, and they had sent somebody out from um, Highway Patrol to pick it up. So basically, you wound up taking apart these shell units to clean them and move them, correct? Yes, sir. And in doing so, you found one more shell, uh, an empty shell case. Yes, sir. And you said you called Devin. That was uh, Devin Faust with the Highway Patrol. Yes, sir. And he's somebody that you, I think you mentioned you had talked to before. Yes, sir. And Devin, you're down in Plato, Missouri when you find this because you've already moved the shell unit that you're taking apart, correct? Mm -hmm. Devin, instead of driving down to Plato, he has some troopers from that area go get the shell case and take possession of it from you. Yes, sir. And you gave them that? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I don't have any other questions. Cross. Mr. Levinson, you and I have never met before, right? No, sir. Um, you were interviewed by the Highway Patrol uh, uh, about this investigation, right? Um, like when I found the case scene or just in general? Just you were interviewed, right? I, yeah, I think within three days of coming out, Devin and one other gentleman, yes. I'm sorry, say that again. Um, Devin, um, I believe one of the first weeks I was there had um, come out to the facility and just asked me basic questions. Did you tell that officer that you couldn't see Lenley hurting a fly? Yes, sir. Do you remember telling that officer that you thought Lenley was a good person? Yes, sir. I have no further questions. Mr. Levinson, has your opinion changed? Um, this is all a lot to take in. Um, you know, I don't know what to say about it, honestly. You, you, you wouldn't repeat those two, two same statements to law. Ask and answer, Your Honor. Oh, objection. Ask and answer. Overruled. Ask the question, counsel. You would not repeat those two same statements to law enforcement today? No, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Recurrence. Mr. Levinson, do you think it's important to hear two sides to every story? Yes, sir. Have you ever heard Lenley's side of the story? Um, I mean, we had talked a good bit um, just after it happened, but I don't really know when it came to details exactly we really talked about it. Um, you know, I'd been given details about what she encountered, but that was it. You read the papers, right? Um, to be honest, sir, I, I don't really do things like that. All your information comes from the police, though? Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing further. Sorry, Judge. Uh, when you were working up there in Montgomery County at the Snake Facility, how, how long were you in that area working, do you think? Um, I believe I was staying on Ben's property in Montgomery for at least a year and a half afterwards. And you were staying there that time, right? Um, yes, I think it might have been around August or September after Ben's passing. Um, I had went to the house to stay there to work with the animals and help out with the dogs. And Lindley was there and you saw her on a regular basis? Um, I saw her when I was in Columbia staying with her father and the kids, but um, once I was out there, um, only a few times. You saw her, but you saw her a few times during this time frame, right? Yes, sir. And during these time frames, she appeared to you to be calm? Yes, sir. Rational? Yes, sir. Uh, and this was yet when she and Michael Humphrey had yet to be charged with the murder of Ben, correct? Yes, sir. The case was still unsolved, if you will. Yes, sir. During any of those times with you, did Ms. Rennick ever say to you, hey, you know what, Dave? I was actually out at the snake facility and my ex-boyfriend shot and killed Ben Rennick. Did she ever tell you that information? No, sir. If you had gotten that information, would you have told the police that? Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Mr. Levinson. Um, how much money again did Ben sell his reptiles to Robin Lair for? Uh, it sounds like the contract was in place for 1.2 million. I'm sorry, say that again. 1.2 million, it sounds like. So Ben Reddick 
was going to get $1.2 million from an NHL hockey player. Yes, sir. So the Renicks were going to be millionaires. Yes, sir. And that deal fell through, right? Um, no, sir. I believe it moved forward afterwards. Well, it, it, Ben never got the $1.2 million. I can't tell you the exact amount that he got or didn't get, sir. Okay, but he had it. Yeah, I couldn't understand you. Oh, I don't know the amount that anybody got. Okay. But at some point in time before Ben died, he was ex <clears throat> expecting to get $1.2 million. Yes, sir. And Lenny Rennick was his wife at that time. Yes, sir. I have no further questions. You got anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay, may this witness be finally excused? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. What you guys? Would you say? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. You're finally excused. You step down. Call your next witness. Eric Bremer. Sir, could you please state your name? Uh, Eric Bremer. And do you know an individual by the name of Lindley Rennick? I do. And do you see her here in the courtroom today? I do. Could you indicate where she's at for this jury? Uh, right at this table. Well, I, I, could you tell us what maybe she's wearing and how she's she looks? She's sitting in between these three women. She's the she middle between female. two women? Yes, correct. Your Honor, would the record reflect that the witness has identified uh, the defendant? The record is so reflected. M Mr. Bremer, could you tell the jury how it is you became uh, to know Ms. Rennick? Uh, we met when she opened her spa um, doing uh, marketing, radio advertising at that time. Uh, and and that's how we first met. And what was your job at that point in time? Helping uh, come up with advertising campaigns, radio commercials. I mean, it was through your work that you met. Right? That's how we met, mm -hmm. correct. And, and basically, uh, for, for some radio marketing, you sold advertising for, for radio stations. That is correct, yes. So if I'm driving down the road and I hear, hey, Joe's Quick Shop, you might have sold Joe's Quick Shop ad. That's right. Okay. And through that relationship, uh, that was a business relationship, did that relationship change? something different it was it, it, for a period of time um, from the end of 2016 December 2016 into uh, 2017 probably around in August 1st of September it was a uh, physical uh, relationship at that time and I'm not trying to pry on your issue but when you say physical it turned into a sexual affair between the two of you that is correct you were both married yes and it, you're aware you may not be aware of the date but on, on June 8th of 2017 is when her husband was murdered. Yes. Okay. Prior to that date, uh, when in relationship to it, did, did your relationship become sexual, if you recall? Around December 2016, something like that. Okay, so, uh, I hate to do math, but maybe seven, eight months before. Sounds right. And, and after Ben was murdered, did, did the relationship, in, in, in not the business, but the, the personal side of it, did that continue? Uh, I did for a few months, until about September. And when did that end? Around September of that time. Uh, just, it ended. I, it seemed like there was a lot going on. Are we in 17? We're in 2017. So it, it, a couple months after Ben's murder. Correct. You continued this relationship, but it ultimately ended a couple months later. That's right. And I, I don't mean to embarrass you, but we're, 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 in terms of some of the sexual activity, where, where did that occur between the two of you at? Um, initially, it was at the spa, and then um, after uh, her husband was murdered, it, it would have been in a vehicle. And, and what about prior to, to it? To, to the murder, was it all at the spa? Spa. Basically, you'd go in there as if for a massage, but you'd go into a room and something of, of a sexual nature would occur. That's correct. Judge, I don't have any other questions. Cross. Mr. Hesman, I'm sorry. Judge, can I ask one more question before you begin to cross? I'm okay. I apologize. Did the two of you communicate by phone, not only phone calls, but by text messaging? Uh, yeah, text, uh, social media. And I say the two of you, you and the defendant, right? Correct, yes. I'm sorry, Judge. I'm sorry, Mr. Hesman. All right, you're a witness now. Thank you. Mr. Bremer, how did this relationship with uh, the sexual relationship with Ms. Rennick start specifically? Uh, we was just at the spa. We were um, talking about things. I was in an unhealthy marriage at the time. Um, 
Did you ever say to the police that Len Urenic was one of the nicest people you've ever met? I believe in the first time I was interviewed, I did. Did you ever tell the police that you walk away from conversations with her a better person after talking with her? I probably did the first time I met them, yes. And you have contact with lots of people in your line of work, right? Correct. You see a lot of people. That's right. And out of all those people, Len Urenic was one of the nicest, most caring people you knew at that time. At that time, it, it felt that way to me. And after Ben Urenic died, um, you sent her a lot of text messages supporting her, or I don't know what they were. Yeah, just trying to be supportive. It seemed like an awful you time. You wouldn't have done that if you thought she murdered somebody, would you? That's correct. But you did, right? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you offered to do things for her, right? Like bring her food and things like that? I did one time bring her food. And didn't she express to you, I mean, what was your um, impression of how she was doing emotionally during that time? Uh, it seemed really difficult for her, but it was a very hard time. I have no further questions. I'm sorry, what was your opinion of her being the nicest person you, you one would ever meet? That's, I believe, what I said the very first uh, meeting I had with the police shortly after that. And that was before, uh, well, let me ask you this. Has that opinion of changed? Um, I suppose so. I, I don't, I've not had contact with her in a long, long time. Well, based on what you now know, you would not say that same thing. Objection, Your Honor. That's, um, Judge, he's that, that's 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 not making suggestion. He's, he's implying facts that, that he's implying facts that are not share that same opinion that she's one of the nicest people you've ever met? Uh, not at this time. And during all these conversations or times you were together with her during those couple months after the murder of her husband, did she ever at one time during when she was having all these difficult times with you, did she ever once tell you, you know what? I was present when my husband got murdered by my ex-boyfriend, should I tell the cops that information? Did she ever once say that to you? No. Did she ever even once hint around at any point in time that she knew and was present when her husband got murdered? No. I don't have any other questions. Any reports? Yes, Your Honor. did you learn, Mr. Bramer, that changed your opinion of Len Urenic? I'm sure many things that I've read. He asked the question. Yeah, I, don't mind, I don't mind the answer. I just, okay. Judge, I, go right ahead. I mean, no objection. The information that you've heard that changed your, came from the state and came from, and you've never heard her side of the story is what I'm trying to say. I've had zero connection since 2017, so anything has been what I've read about, seen in the news. Okay, so, so you really don't know anything about this, right? I have no idea. Okay, no further questions. She never once told you her side of the story, did she? No. She never once told you that she was present when her husband got murdered, did she? No. No further questions? All right, may this witness be finally excused. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we, we may recall him. Okay, you're subject to recall. You can step down now.